present to you, I'm going to be the one presenting the paper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dejan Donek, and I'm here representing Kraljeva Kisnos University technical paper on the America's infrastructure. Each year, ASC prepares a report card that pretty much goes in their every single category and shows the underachievement of the Americas, uh, of the infrastructure of the America. 2010, AAC gave a overall grade of D, which is really sad, but this is due to the fact that we have traffic jams, we have failed bridges, and probably one of the biggest problems we are currently facing, that is our drinkable water. They're actually finding pollution in it. When, at the time in 2009, President of the AAC, Mr. Wayne Plotz, was asked to address this issue, he pretty much summarized it with one simple sentence. He said, you can go in any system, whether it's aviation, water, wastewater, bridges, highways, energy schools, you name it, we got the same problem with all of them. Now the question is, is there a solution to this problem? Well, the first step towards the solution is to have a commitment and a plan. And make no mistake, other countries are already making this commitment. For example, countries in Europe, they're investing 5% of their GDP in their infrastructure. In China, this number is 9%, while in USA is 2.4%. So right there, we have our problem, or we have our solution to the problem. As I mentioned, one of the biggest problems currently is our drink, uh, drinking water. Uh, because of this problem, and also a population problem, New York is already taking on this issue. Currently, they're actually building a water filtration system that is costing around 2.2, 2.3 billion dollars, and when it's done, it is supposed to provide the citizens of New York, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut with drinkable clean water. In 2010, there were testings that actually showed that we have pollution in the water, which means if consumed over an extended amount of time, it's gonna to lead to health problems, and then our health system will take the biggest hit. So wait a minute, first this infrastructure, now it's health system, so it's all connected. The next thing we know, the economy is going, going down. Each year, it's estimated that we have shortage of 11 billion investment in our water problems. Atlanta took on, on this problem by, by themselves. By raising the taxes for 1%, they were able to change 1,800 miles of pipe. And right now, they probably have one of the cleanest water in the US. Uh, in places like Ocean County, LA, where they actually have shortages of water, they're currently capturing the water, the storm water, before it enters the ocean. So that way it goes under a filtration process, so it's gonna be, uh, so they actually make it drinkable. The second biggest issue in the infrastructure we have is the transportation. We all know what happened with the I-35 bridge in 2007 in Minneapolis. This bridge had a big deterioration problem, as well as the design problem. But this is just one, how about the other 70% of the bridges in the US that all have the deterioration problem. This is due to the fact that most of them are over 60, 70 years old. So they need to be uh, constantly maintained and fixed. Even now we are witnesses right here in, uh, in our backyard, New Jersey, New York, we constantly see one, two lanes closed on the bridges. So the, the solution to this problem is we can either build a bridge that is parallel to the new one, to, to the old one, and then cast it in place, as it was done in Utah a couple of years ago or the more obvious one, just bring down the current bridge and build a new one. But then this one, this raise, raises uh, all other issues like traffic jams and logistics, how everything is gonna be planned. The third option is to actually pre-build the bridge at a factory in, that is outside and then just assemble it well on, on spot. The other problem is roads. Do we have a problem in the roads here, New Jersey, New York, New York? Of course we have, because I see laser closing, we have one, two lanes closed, we, we constantly see working on the road at nights. One solution that is more obvious is to actually build new roads that is gonna pretty much spread out the traffic and people will have the option of uh, picking which route to take. The other, more not obvious solution is to build underground tunnels as some country are already practicing that, for example, in China. These tunnels are called urban tunnels, and what this does is gonna, it's, gonna, it's going to free up a lot of space for the population to move around, to drive in the city, 
and of course for, for green spaces. So that way we can actually make our environment better and we can actually improve our economy. It is estimated in 2010 that to fix all these, uh, all these issues with the America's infrastructure, it's gonna take about $2.2 trillion in the next five years. Is it doable? Of course it's doable, but the first step is to take, to make a plan and to have a commitment. You make a very good case for the need for, for infrastructure and spending in the country, but I, I want to hear your thoughts on the ethical implications of the ASCE pre preparing a report for it. Well, as somebody mentioned before, we as engineers, we're opined by ethics law just like the doctors are. The card who is serving actually to notify the public of the problems we have in our uh, in our structure. In repairing the infrastructure, and if any of you here on the way out take a look at the Route 4 bridge, I've been driving under it for almost 50 years, looking up, waiting for it to collapse. It's still there. So it's a slow process. Uh, however, while they do the rebuild of whatever they're rebuilding, airport, runways, ports, it puts the stress of the existing traffic needs on subsequent or other structures going forward, uh, which in essence, many of them are not designed to handle the floors. And then after they get through repairing the main structure system, uh, now you have to rebuild all the secondary uh, the tertiaries because they've taken the uh, use and loading way beyond their original engineering intent. So where do you see the balance of the need to do what we have to do to maintain the dominant systems and at the same time we jeopardize perhaps the secondary Yes, as you mentioned, our structures were not built for this many amount of cars currently for bridges and roads because we never built it was not anticipated that we were going to have this many amount of population in cars. However, the issue, the solution to the issue is, as I mentioned before, we can either build something parallel to the existing one, so it does not have to go down. That way the traffic can, can be spread out, and the people will get to choose which one to pick. Or the one that is currently fixing will have only one lane ready to go, and the one that is or, the, has already been built, we'll have all the things going. 